For this segment, I want you guys to see a training session in real time. This is Peaches. She's a three-year-old Frisian mare, and she has had no work on obstacles at all. And in this uh, training session, I've already warmed her up, walk trot, and this is where I just started moving on to the canter. And we're just going to work on a few obstacles. I don't really have anything in particular planned for this session. I'm just going to kind of wing it and see how it goes. And this would be a very typical training session for me. This is not done for the camera or for the video. This is how I would train a horse. So anyways, this mare is kind of lazy. She'd rather sort of stand around and have to really go out and work. So I'm taking advantage of that. So there I just cantered a bunch of circles there and I got a little I got her a little on the tired side. So I want her to want to take a break. And we just happened to take our break in this little um, alleyway that I have built around a gate obstacle. So as she's standing here taking her break, I'm gonna pet her neck, I'm gonna pet her butt, I'm gonna pet the gate, I'm gonna let her see that that rope can wiggle a little bit and she behaved so we just walk on out of there and we go back to some other work so I want this to be ridiculously easy for her I want her to always know what she's supposed to do I want her to feel very smart I want her to feel very confident I want it to be that each time that we come out that she gets better and better so now you'll see her hop around in the canner a couple times in this video it happened to be really buggy out this day and um, this mare is very, very uh, bug sensitive. So this is one of the only times I can really remember this mare hopping around this in the canter. So I really didn't worry about it. I just rode her forward, and I didn't see any need to create an issue that wasn't really there. She was just trying to get some bugs off. So I didn't feel the need to take it personally that she was hopping around. So again, I'm just cantering around. I'm taking advantage of the fact that this mare is a little on the lazy side. So if we go can and actually this works for energetic horses too. You go canter them for a while and it makes them want to take their break. And even if a horse doesn't really like breaks, it at least helps them be a lot less fidgety if they've just gotten done cantering around. So anyways, I really need her to just stand quietly. So now this is the first time that I'm actually pulling the rope off. And there you see I rubbed her with the rope. Now even though I leaned pretty far there, I still kept my weight even in both stirrups. If she would have ducked to the right, spooking at the rope that was on her left, I'd want to make sure that I had my weight even in both my stirrups. So again, you see how very, very little steps here. I just want her to feel comfortable. Now here you can see she does not feel so comfortable. She doesn't mind looking at this raincoat with her nose, but in a trail obstacle class, I would need to be able to pick that raincoat up and maybe put it on or maybe move it to another barrel. You know, there's lots of times in uh, trail classes that you need to pick up something. So anyways, she doesn't mind having her nose on it, but where I would need her to be positioned is I would need her to put my foot near it. So anyways, I had a hard time getting her to do that. I had to uh, fuss with her there a little bit, but you saw as soon as she stood in a better position, I released the reins and left her go. Now, she actually only had her shoulder near it, but if I would have kept fighting to make her put my foot near it, then that would have been too much of a struggle. So I was really happy with the fact that she put her shoulder near it, and that was good enough for now. And I could return to that. I don't think I do during this session, but um, that's something that I'll probably work on the next day. You know, if I ever start an obstacle and I go, oh, man, this is a little too tough for this one, I might go back to working on it on the ground. So I was really happy with her previous work with the gate, so I decided that I'm going to continue working on the gate and get her to feel really good about this obstacle. So now this is the first time that I actually walked her through the gate, and right there I tossed the rope. I didn't try to put it back up on the standard to close the gate because she wasn't in a position where I could do that. And I did not feel the need to micromanage her and fight with her and, and try to get her back over to that standard. She really didn't know where she was supposed to be. So I just took what she gave me and I left it at that. So now we're going to go back to our forward work and just get her to keep moving. And again, she's kind of hopping around, but I just ask her to go forward off my leg. There's no need to make a big deal out of it.
So you can see how I would progress with a training session like this. It's just a lot of go do a little of this, go do a little of that, come back to this, come back to that. I want all of this to be very stress-free. Now you can see my Cavaletti chute here is set up to help this mare be close to this gate and to position her where I need her to be. That's the only reason that I have the rails and the Cavalettis there around my two standards with the string, is it just makes it a little bit easier on her. So now this time you'll see the mare does a lot better job of positioning me where I need to be. So this time I ask her to get a little bit closer and then I stop and relax. And she's actually still not quite where I need her to be. So here you'll see me, you know, position her just a little bit more. And that was excellent. So you saw how I asked her for a little bit, stopped and rewarded. Asked her for a little bit, stopped and rewarded. Then I was able to hang the gate, and I didn't rush out of there. As soon as I hung the gate, I pet on her a little bit, just left her stand there and relaxed. And that's good. I'm kind of done with that for this session. That was really great, and so I move on to something else. So I've trotted this mare over some ground poles before, but really that was about it. So here I work on just trotting her over this little cross rail, and you notice the first thing I did was walked her over the cross rail. This mare is... You know, a pretty large mare. She has no problem stepping over this cross rail. And actually, um, you can tell she's not a jumper because she steps over it every single time. And that's fine. Really, she's only three. I wouldn't even want her to be jumping anything with any height. It's just a simple matter of I want her to go where I want her to go. And no questions asked and to just march right along. So I started her off at a walk just so she got to see it and take her time. So anyways, this segment is going to be ending pretty soon here. You'll see me do the cross rail work the other direction. And then after that, I finish up with just a little bit more flat work, and then we're done for the day. So anyways, you can see how I started her on three different obstacles, um, trotting over the cross rail, opening and closing the gate, and working with the raincoat. So the raincoat will probably be tomorrow's session, you know, that we can work more on that. But the cross rail and the gate both went really, really great. And she made, you know, huge progress with both of those. So tomorrow when I go to grab that raincoat, she'll have seen it once before. You know, it won't be totally foreign to her. And, um, you know, maybe I can work with her on the ground a little bit with it. And um, maybe I'll spend an entire session of just walk, trot, canter, and in between stand her next to that barrel and try to get her to put my foot near it. But for now, I'm just really happy with the fact that we've accomplished what we have. And we've broken this into really small steps, and I think we've accomplished a lot.